Hi everybody. So I finished George and Rue last night and I just wanted to wrap it up here. Um, okay. This is a really important book in the Canadian canon. It makes me sad that I had not heard of it before I started researching books set in New Brunswick. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why this book is not more widely known and talked about because it's such an important part of Canadian history that everyone should know and understand. Um, this starts in Nova Scotia and it follow, it tells you history about the settlement of Nova, Nova Scotia from former slaves, descendants of former slaves, and the kind of systemic racism that keeps them living in poverty and abject poverty. Um, and it follows the true crime story of George Eliot Clark's, uh, I think maternal distant cousins, um, George and Rufus Hamilton, who um, killed a man in Fredericton, New Brunswick in 1949. And so it is a true crime story, but it's a novelization of that. Um, I'm reading this for my Read Across Canada challenge uh, that, um, and for the New Brunswick prompt. So I think this was a really good choice uh, for New Brunswick. I think, you know, it really, I, I loved the language. I thought, the book kind of the end was a bit not quite as enjoyable because I don't think it's that easy to write a trial in a way that is more poetic and lovely um George Eliot Clark is also a poet so his language is very lush and he's able to like really be evocative in his sentences but it's a little harder to take something that has so much protocol and uh make it as lovely to read as the rest of the story, but obviously that's a really important part of the story. Um, so I really thought this was great. This was a, probably a four star for me. I, I did really care about the characters, but I just needed that little extra bit to feel um, like I was really in there. So uh, definitely enjoyed this one. And I will also wrap up, since I'm here, The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry, which I listened to on audio. And it was narrated by Juanita McLeod. And I fell in love with her narration. She is a brilliant narrator. She was able to characterize each character's voice in such a different way. I could always tell who was speaking based on her characterization of the voices and I don't find that that is equal across most narrators um, her style is absolutely brilliant and it definitely enhanced the book for me although I loved the story so much this is definitely like an area of of historical fiction that really works for me when you're picking out a time and place very very um a specific place Essex um talking about the landscape, talking about the types of people, and you bring in a kind of outsider. In this case, you're bringing in Cora and Martha and some other Londoners to this little village. And, and, and you know, craziness ensues, but not, not anything too unexplainable or too weird happens in this book. It's really just a book about people making assumptions, people... Uh, hysteria, the kind of hysteria of a small village and the, how you can feed each other into these notions that aren't necessarily accurate. Um, it's a love story, but not a love story of only romantic love. It's a love story of finding people, of, of encountering them in this really mature, mostly mature way of the complexity of relationships and how one person loves someone a different way than they need to be loved. Um, it's a, there's a lovely, the children in the story are really compelling. They're very interesting. They each have their own kind of personalities that play into the overall story. It's a real story of an ensemble cast. Um, the Essex Serpent is just this supernatural lingering ghost type figure, um, throughout the whole story until the mystery is resolved. And um, you just, yeah, I just loved being part of that world. I loved um, the characters. They weren't very typical characters. They had just lots and lots of layers that made them really interesting to learn about and really interesting to follow through this very simple story of 
um, of meeting new people, of opening up and growing as a person, of changing, of of testing your morals, testing your dedication. Um, there's also this some some bigger themes, some sort of biblical esque themes of like sacrifice. Um, and sin and goodness and all these things mixed in together. Um, so I thought it was a great novel, super enjoyed it. I'll definitely be checking out more of Sarah Perry's work in the future. So those are the two books that I wanted to catch you up on today and I will check in again when I have finished another one. Hey everyone, welcome to the second to last day of May. Uh, May has been very busy and very crazy, but we've made it to the end. And I have finished my last book of May, and that is The Blue Castle by Ellen Montgomery. So this is a standalone that she wrote, and it is an adult novel. And she didn't write a lot of adult novels. Um, I chose this as my Prince Edward Island read on my Reading Across Canada challenge. Uh, not knowing that this is one of the only books she wrote that is not set in Prince Edward Island. It is set in Ontario, <laughs> um, which was funny because at the beginning of the book, I thought, hmm, those places don't sound like Prince Edward Island, Island places. And then uh, further on, uh, I realized that, that that is indeed the case. This is not set uh, on Prince Edward Island. But that was okay with me. At least she is an author from Prince Edward Island. And she actually wrote this, I believe, um, because she lived in this little area uh, near Lake Country, I think, in Ontario with her husband and uh, wanted to set a novel there. And it was delightful. The nature writing in here is beautiful. We're following Valancey Sterling, who is a very woe-begotten 29-year-old uh, she wakes up on her 29th birthday very depressed and very sad because of the state of her life and she then gets some news that changes all that and it changes the way she looks at the world and it changes the way she acts in the world and it pushes her to like just be more carefree and let go of all the things that have been holding her back and so as a story of of it, it's it's interesting because she's obviously 29, so it's not really a coming of age story, but it does kind of feel like that still because she's reduced herself to something based on her family who are very controlling and very domineering of her. And then she, when she realizes that she actually has power and autonomy in her own life, it creates uh, magic. And um, it's a really sweet story. I really, really liked three quarters of the way through. The ending I found was a little bit too fairy tale esque for me. I would have preferred a little bit more of a realistic ending without quite so much sugar on top, but that's okay. I just accept that uh, that's the way Ella Montgomery wanted it to end. Um, and I thought that there was rich characters in here. It was not totally predictable. I mean, I think I did see some patterns emerging and then thought, oh, you know, this is gonna happen. And I, I was correct, um, but I still felt it was like a lovely novel, um, very life affirming, which is nice. It's nice to read things that are life affirming and that have a happy ending. So. This was my Prince Edward Island book, and uh, that is my reading for May. So thank you so much for watching this reading wrap up. If you uh, enjoy my content, please consider subscribing. I make videos, um, reading wrap ups, TBRs, uh, reading vlogs, and I also make videos about my art practice and when I travel. So. Um, I'd love it if you wanted to subscribe and stick around and I will be back again soon with another video. Thank you so much for watching.